is the vital economic link for a vast and rich and rugged land. This gentle land I'm moving through The air smells good the sky is soft and blue Five miles of wheat fields surrounding me At night I try to dream But yellow wheat is all I see Won't you come down and you would be having so much fun The morning's got wild blossoms The afternoon's got sun Gentle and a gentle land. The railroad is deeply involved in the lives of the people it serves. Even before the wheat harvest is finished, the railroad has distributed cars to local grain elevators to carry it to market. There's not enough storage space for it all. So timing is important. The scene is repeated thousands of times in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, where more than half of America's wheat is grown. and oranges from California, beef from Colorado and potatoes from Idaho, sugar from Wyoming and fish from the Pacific. Food moves from farm to table on a scale that only the railroad can handle.
To help farmers through the complications of the world grain markets, the railroad has agricultural specialists like Charlie Jarrett. This wheat is moving in here all the time. It's stored here. Then the export market bids come in and load it out into ships. Most of the wheat here goes to the Far East. A little of it goes to South and Central America. This ship is a 28,000 ton ship. That's about a million bushels. If you brought it down to railroad cars, it'll be somewhere around 400 cars. That's about four train loads. That's quite a little wheat. As basic as food is fuel. Abundant low sulfur coal from Montana and Wyoming helps meet the demand for cleaner air and helps ease the nation's energy crisis. There was no way to transport this coal economically until the railroad provided a unit train a train that carries only one kind of cargo to a single destination. nearly 50,000 people to keep the railroad running. And railroaders are a special breed. I've been around uh, 20 years now, and I've seen railroaders quit for a short period, and I've seen a lot of them come back. And not only for the money or the job, but they just, there's something that they miss, and uh, it just, uh, it gets kind of born in you, I think, the railroading does. Like father, like son, I guess they always say. <laughs> so. And I'll keep it in the family. I enjoy working with them. It's, it's nice to know that when you get up in the morning and you're going to go relieve your dad or he's going to come and relieve you. It's kind of, it's a nice feeling to know. It's been a challenge, I know, to me and I'm sure to most other engineers to be able to take the train and get it over the road without breaking them in two and without doing damage to uh, the lading or uh, crew members and so forth. Uh, I, I believe that the railroads, with the tonnage they're hauling nowadays and the way they can expedite movements, uh, is, is something great. And I, it's improved so much in the 20 years that I've been railroading. I'm well satisfied. I got a good family, I got a rifle, got lots of shells. Damn right. I wouldn't trade her to anybody. Now, I wouldn't trade my job for anybody either. That's the truth. I got just what I worked for all these years. So I like the outdoors a lot, you know. Like Casey says, it's not polluted or anything, you know. The air is clean around Yeah. In some places in the city, it's kind of bad. But you can drive to the ocean, you know, in a day. You can drive to the mountains, you know, or east of the mountains, where it's a desert during the summertime. In the wintertime, it's cold. But it's just really nice. People are nice, just put it that way, you know. Good guys around. <laughs> oh, I'm happy where I am now as a machinist because I do enjoy my job here and uh, I like the people who's working here with me and so that's what I'm going to say, I guess. I like it on the railroad. It's a good place to work. 